My name is Alex Dorge and I'm an Ansible specialist. I'm going to be walking through the event-driven Ansible notification service that can be installed within ServiceNow. So what is the event-driven Ansible notification service and how can I leverage it? So first off, it is a free application that's in ServiceNow. So it's not part of Ansible or anything like that. It's specifically an application that you install through the ServiceNow store. It does not require any additional purchases for ServiceNow, so it doesn't require the integration hub pack. And what it gets set up to do is it'll monitor three different tables within ServiceNow, depending on what you check as far as uh, in the application itself. So it can do catalog requests, incidents, or problems. As of right now, which is August 2024, there isn't a way to filter. So to only send incidents that are assigned to certain groups or certain personnel or certain categories in the catalog, it will send everything. And then obviously you'd handle on the rulebook side of things, which catalog requests or incidents you'd actually respond to. So what do I actually configure then within the application? So after I've installed it, I go into the application inside service now, and then I can set what I want to trigger off of. So maybe a catalog request being approved and an incident being created. That would then send that information to event driven Ansible. So I'd have to set up an event driven Ansible URL, which will be the actual URL for my event driven Ansible controller, as well as the port that I have set up on the webhook for the actual listener. And then I would also recommend setting up a token so to provide that authentication to ensure that the webhook request is actually being sent directly from ServiceNow with the token in there. If you require a mid server because your Ansible server isn't publicly accessible, you can put in your mid server so it'll route that traffic. And then on the back end, on the Ansible side of things, you will need to configure a rulebook that actually has that listener set up and points to the job templates or workflow job templates that you want to actually respond to those particular events. So, what does this look like? So this is what the application actually looks like within ServiceNow. So it really is very easy to set up and you only really need to set it up once. So after you've set up that webhook URL and auth token, you can test connectivity to verify that everything's working, pick the tables that you want to monitor, and then the rest really is handled on the rulebook side of things and the actual job templates themselves that you want to call. So what can a rulebook look like? So this is a very basic rulebook from the Ansible side of things. So you will use that generic webhook source plugin Pick whatever port that you want to monitor. So obviously have something set up for firewall rules. So only that port is open and only the source being ServiceNow or your mid server. And then add in that token to verify again that authenticity that it's coming from ServiceNow. And then put in as many or as few conditions as you want to call as many or as few workflows or job templates as you want. So all of this is then set up in my case. If I get an incident that has the short description of Prometheus node exporter is down, it's going to call a specific workflow template that is to start the Prometheus node exporter that's part of the security group. And I'm taking as part of that payload the VM name and ticket number. So it does include both out of the box capability of ServiceNow. So obviously the ticket number is part of the out of box capability. And then it's also going to take a custom parameter that I put in there, which is the VM name that also gets passed. So I can use that to only remediate the specific host that I have an issue with. So all of this is capable as part of what the out-of-the-box uh, plugin comes with and the out-of-the-box application from the ServiceNow site. So let's jump into a demonstration to see how this gets set up and what I can do from the Ansible side of things. So let's jump into the demonstration. So first, I've logged into ServiceNow and obviously I'm an administrator since I have the capability to install applications. So if I go into System Applications and go to the All section, that's where I'd search for a venture of an Ansible. Because I'm on a specific instance that's tied to Red Hat, I can't see the application through here. But once you search for a vendor and Ansible, it will look like this. So it'll show up as a store application that you can click into. And then once you click into it, you're able to install. There is a version newer than 1.0.0. So please make sure you install the latest version since it'll make sure everything is set up properly. Once that's done, I want to set up a user that has access to make changes to a vendor and Ansible notification service. So if I go into users, I can make changes to a user. I did find as I went through this process that I could not use my sysadmin level user. It caused conflicts when I was trying to make changes to the table. So I created a separate user that just had a couple roles assigned to it. So go into that user, go down to the roles section and click edit. And all I have are three specific roles. So the ITIL, ITIL admin, and then the specific new EDA admin access. And that will allow me to make all the changes. That's really all I needed to do as this user. So if I change back to um, basically log out and log in as that user, I've got it set up with the event driven Ansible notification service. So at this point, I've saved it as a favorite, but if you search for event driven Ansible notification service, it'll show up as an application. And there really is only one thing to do with the properties. And this is where I get that table uh, to monitor that I showed before. 
So I've already set up my particular webhook URL and I've got a webhook authorization token set up. I don't have a mid server, so I won't go through that process. But for now, I'm just gonna have a table to monitor being when created. I do wanna test connectivity to make sure it works. I'm just gonna click this button and I should expect to see a webhook connection okay. So I know everything is being received properly on the service now side for, into event driven Ansible. I can actually check that by going into event driven Ansible since I'm monitoring for anything coming from ServiceNow. I should see a rule audit that says ServiceNow output information. So good, this is basically just that test case. And I can see that as the event data itself. The only thing that I really need to do is set up that rule book. So in my case, I've created a very basic rule book. The purpose of this is just to see exactly what data gets sent from ServiceNow. So I'm using event.meta is defined, which essentially every single rule or every single uh, submission from ServiceNow will have that defined. So this will allow me to debug every single statement that comes from ServiceNow so I can create the conditions that I want to leverage. As I showed in the example before, I can take that short description and use that as my trigger. But in this case, I'm keeping it very simple. So if I go back into Event Driven Ansible, obviously I've already synced that project and I've already set up that rulebook activation. So my ServiceNow rulebook activation is running and it already has that one trigger. So what I'll do now is I'll go back into ServiceNow. I will save that configuration and I'll switch back into my regular user to create an incident and see how that triggers inside the Event Driven Ansible notification service. So I'll just create a new incident and I'll fill in some of the extra data that I have. So I do want to specifically pick out the custom fields that I've created just to see how that works from a uh, user perspective. So pick various impacts and urgency so I can see how that works. Keep it as a state new. And I'll say this is a notification from ServiceNow as my short description. And then I can fill in some of the custom fields. So operating system, IP address, and VM name are all custom fields that I've created. So I'm going to say rel8 for the operating system. I'm going to leave IP address blank just to show that it won't send fields that are blank. And then for VM name, I'm going to send it as servicenow.shadowman.dev because maybe I've got a servicenow.shadowman.dev rel8 box sitting in my IR. All I'm going to do then is click submit. And this will immediately then send that webhook to Event Driven Ansible so I can go into my Event Driven Ansible controller. I can see that I now have a second fire count. And if I go into Rule Audit, I can see that I now have a new output service now information. And then go into Events, go into this Ansible.eda webhook, and here is that JSON payload. So every single aspect of this payload can then be used as a condition or as an extra variable that I then send to a job template or workflow job template. So if I want to provide information back to the incident itself, I can leverage an incident number, I can leverage the severity or priority, and I can also leverage those custom fields, like this U underscore operating system, the short description, all of that becomes available to me for my automation. And certainly if some of these fields, as you said, will not get sent, I can add in defaults or make sure that they're not sent, use default omit if those variables are not sent. But as you can see, this gives you a lot of flexibility and capability. I didn't have to set up all that much from ServiceNow. Most of the work goes into the rule books themselves. So I can leverage this to start building out my payload as to what conditions I want to trigger off of and then what job templates I want to run within the automation platform. So that was a quick demonstration of the event-driven Ansible notification service that's part of ServiceNow. Really most of the work after you do that initial setup is developing the rule book based on what conditions you want to use to trigger. So just like a playbook, it can grow. So I can start with one condition for one specific incident that I want to respond to or one specific catalog item, and then slowly grow as I start building out the automation and comfort with doing some auto remediation of incidents or automatic self-service capability to my end users. In the description down below, I will include an integration walkthrough, which is basically a blog I wrote on GitHub to walk through all of those steps. And then I'll also include a link directly to the Ansible uh, notification service application itself. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about Event Driven Ansible Notification Service for ServiceNow and how that can start streamlining some of your automation and self-service capability. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.